If you look at Easter Seal's mission overall, it's to provide exceptional services to individuals with disabilities or special needs so that they can learn, live, work, and play in the community. And you look, if you look at our recreational services here at this facility, it really is meeting that component of the mission, helping them to play in the community. Those experiences that an individual wouldn't be able to get otherwise, be it climbing a climbing wall, canoeing, uh, riding a zip line, swimming, those kinds of things that we really um, are, are offering to them uh, that, that's unique for them. I'm so proud of about Easter Seals is that we go across the spectrum of age, we go across the spectrum of disability, and any one of us at any point in our lives uh, may need the services of Easter Seals. Any one of us can acquire a disability in the course of our lifetime, be it through a stroke, an automobile accident, um, so we're, we're there for the community. They're all wanting to come and have an experience where they're gaining independence, self-confidence, having first-time experiences, um, for example, on the potter's wheel, or learning to paddle a canoe, or catching a fish for the first time. So it's all about self-confidence, but we, because we are Easter Cells, we're able to modify program and have, have that camper, have that first-time experience to gain independence. We serve the whole family. We have the, we have the participant who comes to camp, the camper, but for many of our families, they have you know, other children. Taking care of a special needs child is a full-time job, and um, most often families don't get a break. So it's important for them to have respite. So that's where we offer respite services throughout the year. The summer is definitely, you know, anywhere from six, eight, or twelve days. But on the weekends in November or the weekend on New Year's Eve, you know, for that family to get this break is really critical. And the camper needs a break from their family. A few months ago, we had a family. We interviewed a new family. And this was the camper is twenty two years old, has never been away from his parents, even to stay the night. His parents are older, and um, this is their only child. And he has, he's medically fragile, has some developmental delay. And so this interview is really important. And we went to great strides to make sure that he had one-to-one -one supervision and he has a special diet. He needs the supervision of a nurse. We have RNs on staff, LPNs. And so we really prepared him to have this successful week. His parents stayed close by the first night at a bed and breakfast because they just knew that I was going to call them to come get him. And I called them only to tell them how, how well he was doing. I always call first-time families. And they said, is it okay if we leave Kent County? I said, well, sh sure. So he stayed the whole week, and they picked him up today. And his dad told me this was the first time in this young man's 22 years that he was never sent home or had you know, to be called. Or They went on a sailing trip. They really got a break. And he had the best week. And you know, I didn't need to call them at all. This was huge for this family. Yeah. Well, if you look at some of the individuals that we're serving here, they're also receiving other services from us with some of our other programs. So it really is um, trying to meet all of the needs of the family. And so that's uh, how this is a big component of that. Live, learn, work, and play in the community. This is the play component. We provide uh, services to individuals who have disabilities so they can have employment in the community. We all um, look toward identifying ourselves by what we do, how, what is our work. And so individuals with disabilities have the same uh, desire to be recognized for the work that they do. Um, living in the community, the more services we can provide in the community, it helps people stay in the community. Learning in the community, um, in early intervention services, uh, we're helping prepare younger children so that when they enter school they're ready educationally, academically. Right. Our basic funding, 85 percent of our funding comes through governmental funds, so be it Medicare, Medicaid, um, waivers of Medicaid, and then we have third-party insurances that pay for services, which I think is another misnomer. A lot of people don't realize that we do uh, accept insurance for services that we're providing. Um, and then there are uh, individuals that we also have some self-pay. Individuals are paying for their services out of pocket. We do a lot of fundraising, and we do that so that we can 
um, offset those uncompensated services. Many of the services we do provide, the funding that we receive for that doesn't cover the total cost of it. So that's probably the biggest worry that I have. But we've got a lot of support from our community. Um, I think the United States, if you look at how giving uh, a country we are, um, other countries don't do the kinds of things we do. They don't chip in and provide that, that volunteerism, uh, the dollars to help these kinds of services. I think we're blessed in, in the United States uh, with that culture. We are here in the community for the community. Uh, we are a part of the community and we want the community to know that. Um, we are Easter Seals and we're proud to be in, in, in Maryland and, and we're proud of the services that we provide and we ask anyone to reach out to us. Uh, Easter.